Hey everybody, welcome back to Jamea's Promo, and today we will be talking about 10 different settings that you should try, or 10 cool things that your Samsung phone is able to do. So as you know, if you're a Samsung owner, there's so many features and settings and a lot of stuff that you're able to play with and take a look at. So today I'm only gonna cover 10 things that you should at least try if you're not already trying them right now. So this first one that we'll talk about is bubble notifications. So bubble notifications will definitely come in handy. Let's say if you're watching YouTube, a notification pops through, you're watching whatever you're watching. You don't really want it to fully take over everything, stop what you're doing. You'd be able to respond back and then you'd be able to tap this button one more time. You can keep it open if you want to. If there is more conversations happening, you'll still see a circle. You tap it, it'll expand into other conversations as well. This is here just an example with Android or Google messages. And then if you wanna get rid of it, simply bring it down to the X and close it out. So how you're able to first set up these bubble notifications is you go inside of your settings and then you tap notifications. You'll scroll down to advanced settings and then inside of advanced settings, this is where you can see floating notifications. Now yours could be turned off, it might also have this smart pop-up view and inside of the smart pop-up view you'd be able to have particular applications that this would be able to work with other than that you can use this option here that is called bubbles now if you choose bubbles notifications for compatible conversations will include an icon you can tap to change the conversation in bubble view so you can see here that it's going to show other conversations that's also happening now i'm going to take this one just a step further so let's say that you selected this for the bubble notifications. One of the other cool things is let's say inside of uh, Google Messages. As example, when you're inside of a conversation, you'd be able to go up to the very top right hand side, hit on details. And then once inside of there, you can go to notifications. And with this one, you can actually bubble this conversation. So the cool thing is that, for example, for Android messages, because this is pretty much a Google feature, you'd be able to set up particular conversations to have this pop up like a bubble conversation just by, you know, taking it one step further. But other than that, it works pretty cool with a bunch of other applications. If you're not a huge fan of the bubble, I know that we're mostly talking about the bubble right now. But if you did want to play with that smart pop-up view and you don't want it to be with all applications, maybe you just want it to be with two, then you can set it up this way. Setting number two that you can play with, it's kind of along the same lines as what we were just playing with when you go inside of your settings. Uh, the fastest way to find this one is by going inside of search and then you can search right here for flash notifications. So flash notifications, there's two options. You can do the screen flash. You can also do the camera flash. Now, if you want to take a look at the full settings, you just tap right there. It's going to take you inside of this accessibility shortcuts, the advanced features for that. Here is flash notifications, and this is where you can turn it on if you want the camera to flash on the back or if you want your screen to flash. And it's only a two flash uh, you know, notification you get. So for example, it's flashing not only my screen, but also the LED in the back. So this is really going to come in handy for most people if they have their phones on silent and vibrate. I know vibrate, I can usually hear it all the time, but if it's sitting on the couch, I can't hear the vibration. Maybe if I'm moving around, looking around, and I see this, this light kind of flashing, it's gonna let me know that there is a notification. Now, if you wanna see what it looks like with the camera flash on the back, you can see that it's you know right there, just flashing the LED on the back. Now, I've had the camera flash notification on before, and sometimes it would kind of bother me at night, but I do use my phone with Do Not Disturb. So if I use Do Not Disturb, it automatically turns on at 8 p.m. at night, so we're going to be good there. But one thing to keep in mind if you're at a movie theater, if you're at a, in, a, in a meeting, something like that, or if you're around a bunch of people and they think that you're taking a picture, um, you might want to double think this camera flash. You can use it a few times, uh, but I think the screen flash right here is going to be something that's good because sometimes my screen is on, but I might not be looking hard at the screen and when the screen is on more than more than likely you're not getting a notification or vibrate that you got something coming through because the screen is already on so notification doesn't really need to be set it thinks you're already looking at the phone so this is a way that if you kind of walk away a little bit you're cooking you see your screen flash just like this then you know something maybe important just came through the third setting that you can play with and take a look at will be dealing with autofill. So out of the box, the Samsung autofill, it's it's Samsung, Samsung Pass, Samsung autofill service that does it for you. So when you go to a website or application, the autofilling of everything, maybe you might be coming from a Google phone or another phone that was using the Google services as autofill. So you can actually change it here. So when you go inside of the settings, 
Then you tap on the search button. Fastest way again is, is looking for autofill service. So for autofill service is just underneath the general management, but this is where you want to go right inside of there. Tap over here for autofill service. And then this is where you can change it. So right now the autofill is with Samsung pass, but if I wanted to use the Google services, uh, the Google autofill, then I'd be able to have this one as the default service to autofill pretty much anything or any information that I'm filling in. Oh, and if you guys are appreciating this video so far, you're enjoying it, or maybe you're brand new to the channel, make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications to so get notified for all future videos. And again, if you appreciate this thing, you're learning something, you're getting something new from it. Again, a big thumbs up will help push this video to more and more people because you're helping out the YouTube algorithm, letting people know that this thing is helpful and beneficial. Now, this next setting that you can change is one that it's a whole can of worms by itself. I'll probably make a dedicated video for it. And and it's inside of the one hand operation plus a way that you can have your recent apps look quite different. So instead of you having it look like this, also too, when it comes down to particular applications, it doesn't really give you many options to do something with it. So when you actually have it set up like this, you'd be able to go right inside of an application super quick. Also too, you'll be able to have the options on the left hand side with those three little dots where you can take a photo, take a video right away. The other thing you can also do is let's say on Twitter, you'd be able to hit those three little dots. You can take a look, you can write back to a few people that you've written to, you can do a new uh, tweet, you can capture something so you can post an image, you can also do search. So it gives you a lot of tools with a lot of these applications that you already use. Now let's say that we take a look at gallery. For gallery, you can take a look at, really you can just uh, search the gallery. There's really nothing going on there. But how you're able to set this one up is we are using the One Hand Operation Plus. Um, and so this you can download off the Play Store, the Galaxy Store, you can get it from Good Lock. And once you have this one opened up, how I have mine set up here is on the left handle uh, right over here. I only have it set up for the back key when I swipe it right. You can see that the other two are actually none because I do love the gestures ability of Android 10. And once you turn on one hand operation plus, it kind of turns that off. So really all I did was I have the back, uh, the left handle is back. The right handle I do have for straight is going to be back. Nothing for, for diagonal up, I'll find something later on. But for diagonal down, there's a lot that's going on here that you can make these little uh, you know arrows do something. So again, swiping back, swiping up, swiping diagonally down. So when you choose diagonally down, for me particularly, that's the one that I chose for it. And you wanna go all the way to the very bottom for task switcher. So task switcher is actually really cool. Again, you just swipe down, here it is. You can switch between all the different tasks. So here is Twitter, swipe down one more time. I head right back inside of Spotify, swipe that, you know, swipe down one more time, go back inside of YouTube, maybe swipe down one more time. I take a look at Spotify, hit the three dots, then I go straight into 90s alternative rock, you know, things like that. So it's actually really cool and helpful and beneficial. Now, the other stuff that I have set up really quick is gonna be really just the back key over here on the left, the back key and task switcher. And then for the size, I do have the size right over here, the whole thing of my phone. So this way I can go anywhere on the top, bottom, left, right, so I can be able to go back, things like that. The touch width, I don't need it to be in. Um, I'd rather have it over here because I go from the very edge anyways. Then you just wanna go right up here inside of the advanced settings. And with this one here for animation, the curved line is the coolest. Arrow one and two is not really that cool, but all I did was I changed the color of my arrow. So you can see there that uh, it turned blue. So you can change whatever color you want, tap it, switch it, and go with it. And, uh, and then you're all good to go. So this is a way that you're able to take a look and test to see you know, what it looks like. So again, I'm gonna go with something right over here. So this looks good to me, done, finished, and that was that setting you can play with. Now kind of going along the same lines, when you take a look at any of your applications, so let's say you don't wanna have that one hand operation plus, but when you do swipe up, one of the things that you can do is you can tap on the icon and you can go to keep open and you can do that with multiple applications. So it looks like that there's only one that I have set up there. Keep open, looks like I got two. Keep open, I have three. Uh, let's see, how many of these can I do? So you can only have three as a keep open. And all this really means is that you're basically locking it to where this way it doesn't have to reload as it opens up. So it's a way that it's caching the application in the background and also to um, so it's like a fast open. So it's going to open up really quick. Uh, the other thing as well is that if you were to close all, then those three are also going to stay there. Now, just as example, let's say that you do want to play with that one hand operation. Plus when you go on the left hand side, you can still lock the app from here. 
So this way you can lock it, it's not gonna close out, and you can also uh, quickly open it, and that was kind of what it used to be called, uh, was a, a quick open. Uh, so you can also unlock the application, open it in split screen, open it in pop-up view, app info. I mean, there's just a little bit more that you're able to do when it comes down to that one hand operation plus, but really I wanted to show you also with this one here, you can tap it um, with that icon. And when you tap the icon, you can see that option there for keep open. The next setting to play with is if you have anything in your house that is smart, anything that's really connected to the internet. So through my settings, I made sure that I have my devices just sitting right there. Um, or you can pull it down twice. You'll see devices sitting here as well. When you go inside of devices, this is where you go inside of your smart things. And so inside of smart things right over here, when you tap on this little menu on the on the top left, I've played with this companion apps already. Companion apps is a way that you can automate your phone. So this way, when the alarm goes off on the phone, it'll turn things on or even turn stuff off. Now, if you don't really wanna play with companion apps, maybe you don't need your alarm to go off as well, just play with automation. So inside of automation, I have my TV turning on at 7 a.m. Now, if you wanted to start a brand new one, you do this if button. So it's an if then. It's kind of like playing with Bixby. If you have not played with Bixby before, this is basically Bixby. It's built in called automation with inside of smart things. So if choose a conditions that will start the automation, then this would happen. So if let's say that there is a member location, maybe somebody just got home location mode when the mode is set to away, maybe something with the weather. Uh, let's just say an easy one is time. So you can do like a period of time, you can do any time, you can do a specific time. So maybe, uh, you know, the time is at 7.45 p.m. and we can do this, let's just do this for just Saturday and Sunday. So basically on the weekend, 7.45 p.m., um, then you choose what you want to happen. So you can control a device, you can notify somebody, and you can also uh, change this location's mode. So control devices, it just really depends on how many things are connected. And so my, my TV that's up in the living room, I'd be able to control this. And so I can uh, basically do whatever I really want. So it's really fun, just play around with the automation. So this is the one that I do have set up. I don't wanna set up the TV because I already have one that is going already. Uh, but yeah, so this is what we have set up for automation. Now you do have the ability to turn this off. So let's say that you are away, you're on vacation. You'd simply be able to turn this one off if you would like. On the very top, if you wanna delete, you can go through, you can delete it, and then that's how you can get rid of any automation that you have set up. The next setting that you can play with and turn on or turn off is gonna be inside of the settings. You go back inside of notifications. So this is something that I noticed earlier when I was playing with like notification history, also floating notifications. I noticed on the bottom, wireless emergency alerts. Now I do wanna mention here that if you don't see this option, it's probably just because your phone doesn't uh, support this. Maybe your uh, carrier doesn't support this, but uh, I just wanna let you know that if you don't see it, th that could be why. You can completely uh, uh, turn off all of the alerts. So any type of emergency alert, um, you'd be able to turn off except for presidential alerts. This is the one that you're not able to turn off. So when it comes down to extreme threats, extreme threats to life and property, severe threats, severe threats to life and property, amber alerts, public safety messages, state and local tests, things like that. Then you can take a look at this emergency alert history. So you notice, um, at least for in our area, we got this tornado warning and there was actually no tornado even in the area. It was actually pretty sunny out. So if there's any of these that you would like to turn off, you are able to turn it off. I would probably suggest just to keep these on. I mean, these are emergency alerts. It always is helpful to keep this on, you know, especially when it comes down to maybe some severe threats, amber alerts, things like that. Don't really know maybe about the public safety messages. I don't believe I really got much of those anyways, state and local tests. So that would probably be that weather one that we just got done talking about. But again, uh, it's an area that you're able to turn any of those off if you don't need them. Maybe you have so many devices in your home that you wanna turn it off on the ones that you're not using. So for example, I'm using the Galaxy S21 Ultra. I also have multiple other phones. I can go to those other phones that do not have my SIM card in them and I can actually turn those off. That's really the only situation where I can find that one to be helpful to turn off 
emergency alerts. The next setting to take a look at or play with is especially if you have Samsung One UI 3.1 or anything after, you have the screen right over here on the extreme left-hand side. You can turn this off if you don't wanna have anything on the left-hand side. Sometimes it's always nice just to get some notifications. You can read some things. It's always good to get, to get educated in really any way possible. You have Samsung Free. You also have Google Discover. I'm a big you know Google Discover type user. Uh, and so once you have this one selected or Samsung free, uh, once you have that Google Discover, you'd be able to swipe right on over. Then you're able to read everything and, and go through it all. It's a lot of cool things. And, and I'm, I'm more of a big fan of the, the Google than I am the Samsung version. The next setting to play with and change is one that I always make sure that I have on all the time. And that's going to be the lift to wake especially if you have your facial recognition already turned on then what's going to happen is the moment that you lift up your phone it's going to wake up read you and it's unlocked and it's actually super nice and super quick so you want to go inside of your advanced features inside of the advanced features it is a motion and gesture because you're basically motioning the phone up you're gesturing it up and you have this option here that is called lift to wake so it'll turn on the screen when you pick up your phone again super helpful especially if you have your facial recognition turned on uh, it's actually one of those things that's really cool. Sometimes I just pick up my phone really quick and I want to look at my, my lock screen right here just to see notifications and things like that. But it'll actually unlock with me actually super quick with those two combined. And now the very last one that you're able to play with is one that's inside of the camera. You can do this with the front facing camera. You can also do it with the rear facing camera. So what you want to do is swipe over until you see portrait. Now inside of portrait, what you'll notice is let's say that we flip this one out. The icon you're looking for is this one right here, and this is where you can change the effects of everything in the background. So you can, you can, uh, you know, it, again, it's looking for a face, it's for portrait. So you'd be able to do like studio lighting, you could do high key mono, low key mono, uh, backdrop, and then you also have color point as well. A lot of these are actually really cool to play with. If you don't want to test it on yourself, just test it on somebody else with the rear camera. So let's say that you switch to the rear camera. Again, you tap on this icon here and you can go through and play. Now, when you do have a face that is inside and it's being picked up, you can change the brightness of how bright you want the face to be. So let's say that we move it right back to the front. And let's say that uh, I was to show myself here for just a couple seconds. Now, when you go up and you point it up, you can see that uh, for this one, it's, it's quite drastic, quite crazy. Um, I can bring up the lighting effect on my face. So I can bring it down, bring it up. So you can see how it's changing with the face. Um, then when you move it over, you got studio. I mean, there's so many things you can do. You got, you know, backdrop. You can change the intensity of how all of this looks. So here is this intensity here, not gonna see a huge difference, but here you can see a massive change uh, with, you know, changing with like the, the studio lighting that's sitting right there. So if you have not played with portrait yet, either, you know, to yourself or to another person using the rear camera, again, tap on this button right over here. You can change the intensity of the blur. You can change the intensity of studio, things like that. Um, and then you'd be able to play with the lighting that is on the face again, because of portrait mode, but I hope you guys have appreciated this video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you guys go out there and you try some of this stuff. And if you guys did like it, please give it a huge thumbs up. If you have not subscribed already, make sure you guys hit subscribe right over here in the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.